Hey everyone, and this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can use the alpha metric to find better trades. And the reason I wanna show you this is because recently we've been going through a lot of videos here looking at using expected value, which is great. And a lot of people have jumped on this bandwagon of using expected value to determine trades. But really what we're trying to figure out is does the highest expected value trade mean that that's the best trade or can we use something else? And we'll argue that we wanna use a metric called alpha, which can help normalize or adjust trades for the actual risk to get that expected value that you're seeing there. So inside of option alpha, again, remember, we calculate expected value a lot very differently than everybody else, which is that we're not just taking the max loss and the max profit and the probability of those, we're also taking that partial profit, partial losses zone in there and calculating basically every single partial profit, partial loss along this spread or slope that you see here in between strategies. And so what that does is that allows us to publish and show you what the expected value is for every potential trade idea or trade type that you're looking at. And so what I've seen a lot of people do recently is they come in here and they go and sort this list by highest expected value. And so the question that I'm obviously posing here is, should I just trade the highest expected value position? Does expected value above all else mean that that should be our number one focus? And the answer to that question is no. And I wanna show you why here in this video. So first of all, let's look at two different trades. These are ones that I took a while back in screenshots, but they still make sense today. We can look at other ones if we needed to, but they're just two trades, an SPY iron condor, a QQQ iron condor. They have about the same characteristics. They were out of the money, far from expiration, 23 days in both cases to go until expiration when I took these screenshots. And you can see here that the actual EV on these trades is very similar, although the QQQ position over here has a higher expected value. So if you were to just judge this trade purely based on the expected value of the position, you would look at this trade and say that the QQQ position has, is the better trade because the expected value is higher for this potential position. You have the opportunity to potentially collect if you trade this trade multiple times over the course of your lifetime, $282 is the expected value versus the SPY position over here, the expected value on that was $266. So you would say, oh, okay, if we're just trading based on expected value, we're not gonna take the SPY trade and we are gonna take the QQQ trade. And that is where a lot of traders just purely using expected value fail is because they're not accounting for the actual risk in these positions. So when I actually go to the next slide here and you can see what the actual risk is, in these positions, the numbers actually start to change just a little bit as far as which ones make sense and which ones don't. And it's all because we're using this metric here, alpha, which is just purely the expected value divided by the max loss. So we take the expected value divided by the max loss that gets us our alpha metric here. And it's basically a way to normalize different trades that you're looking at so that you're kind of trying to compare apples to apples here as in how much expected value am I getting per unit of risk that I'm actually taking. And so if you look at this one here, the QQQ trade, this QQQ trade has an expected value of $282, but unfortunately the max loss on this position is $3,079. That is a huge max loss. And so for that reason, the alpha number on QQQ, the alpha metric is basically down to 9.2%. And so it's still compared to maybe other trades that are non-positive EV might still be a good trade, but if you compare it directly to a very similar trade in SPY at the time, for the same days to expiration, the same iron condor general setup, you see that the SPY trade at this time had an expected value of $266, but the max loss on this position was $671. This meant that you're actually collecting more expected value per unit of risk. And this is where you actually see that the alpha metric in this case is significantly higher. So the alpha here is 39.7, which means that all other things being equal, this is significantly better trade from a risk reward perspective than the other trade in QQQ. 
So hopefully what you can see here, just going through this very simple example, and I'll show you another live example here, is that when you are looking for trades, yes, it is important to find positive expected value. Yes, we wanna get into trades that have positive expected value, but more so than that, when we're comparing trades across multiple tickers and multiple timelines, we can use alpha as a guidepost as to which trades have the better, you could call it expected value, adjusted for risk type of profile, which is what we want. So if I go into here to trade ideas, which is right now, and I'll just continue to update this to the most current, most relevant information, I can go in here and I can find the ETFs. I can even go in here and say, I want trades that have a high probability of profit. And I can say that I want trades that have at least $5 of expected value or more. And from here, now I can sort this list by alpha, which is the default setting. Now, if I actually sorted the list by EV, this trade in XOP would not be the top trade. If I actually sorted the list here, you could see that this XSP trade would be the highest trade right now with alpha, which is $222 of alpha. Now, again, it's just really just what the alpha is for that position, but it could entail some significant risk. It has a lot of high probable a lot of high value here if you actually hit the max reward and hit max profit, but also a lot of risk here. You can see a lot of positions even with max risk still have positive expected expected values like this trade in, in, in uh, XOP, which is a 51 day to expiration trade, still has positive expected, alpha, uh, expected value, but the alpha here is significantly lower. So if we use alpha to kind of normalize a lot of what we see here, we can start to filter these out and start to see, okay, of the trades that we're doing, which trades kind of fit my risk profile and have better performance on than other trades. So in this case, maybe this trade might be a good trade. It's a 55% alpha, almost a 70% chance of success, $62 expected value, and the max profit is actually significantly higher than the max loss. So maybe ends up looking like a better trade. And that's all we're trying to do here as traders. We're trying to find better trading opportunities. And one way you can do that is, of course, by using alpha in your trades. Okay, I hope this was really helpful. As always, if you have any questions, let us know. And until next time, happy trading.